Hey everybody, it's Keith with the L1 Automotive Training Channel. And in today's video, we're going to do our first iteration of where I go through my email, techquestions at l1training.com, and read some of your guys' questions and answer a few of them. So remember, if you want your question answered, email it to techquestions at l1training.com. I'll put a link down in the description, and then also probably put some cool little marquee thing across the bottom. I got your back. <laughs> Okay, first question is from someone who I'm going to butcher their name, so their initials are YY. I uh, can't pronounce it, last name looks like it's spelled Yo. So he says, quick question. I know that you mentioned when programming Nissans that a stable battery voltage is one of the most important facts. I don't have a battery voltage maintainer. Do you think it's okay to do without a battery maintainer? Question mark. I think my battery is pretty stable and it shows 13.3 right now. Or any experience without a battery maintainer? Question mark. I don't want to spend about five hundred dollars for only this one step only this step for it. Thank you for this, and I appreciate all the videos. Mr. YY, uh unfortunately, yes, a battery maintainer is extremely important. So in my J2534 class, we kind of I break down some examples of failures due to this and why. Uh, just imagine that all the data received over the network while you're programming is ones and zeros. And ones and zeros are transmitted over that data line as voltage increases and de decreases, little packets of data that are square waves of voltage. Uh, traditional battery maintainers, or sorry, traditional battery um, chargers push voltage up and down to maintain a current setting. And battery maintainers designed for flash programming will push the amperage up and down in order to maintain a steady voltage. So we don't get any weird anomalies in those voltage spikes that could look like a one or a zero when it shouldn't be. Um, so when you're just not using one at all, and in this particular instance, Mr. Y here is asking about a Nissan flash. And if you're using a J2534 device, most likely that Nissan flash is going to take somewhere upwards of 30 minutes. Um, I would not recommend you doing a Nissan flash without a battery maintainer. If battery voltage drops below 12 volts, uh, the flash could stop, and then depending upon where it stops, if you cycle the key or if you have an issue where it stops at too low a voltage and the bootloader gets damaged inside the software, the PCM will no longer communicate and function, and you won't be able to recover it. It's very difficult to recover them afterwards. I've had good luck doing some of them if you have console and you have to have a working module, and then you have to edit a custom CSV file, and then hot swap the modules and press go, and it only works with console. I've tried it with a JBox. Matter of fact, we did this live um, at Super Saturday when I did my J2534 class there. We tried to brick a Nissan, and then we recovered it. So pretty neat, pretty interesting process. But uh, where I get to that is you absolutely have to have a battery maintainer. Yes, it costs $500, but how much does a new module cost if you mess one up? Uh, newer Nissans, $1,000 for a new module. Luckily, you can do used modules on a lot of them, but some of them you can't. So uh, please, please, please get, it, get a uh, maintainer. You can get the IOTA brand maintainer uh, somewhere sub $200. So I'll put a link in the description, uh, maybe a paid link, an Amazon affiliate link, which helps the channel. Thank you very much if you purchase from there. Um, but I'll put a link to that, so I'll just put question number one, reference link down there at the bottom, and maybe put a link to my website where you can get more J2534 training. All right, uh, on to the next question. All right, next question is from Jorge E, or George, I'm sorry, I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, it's in reference to a 2013 Mazda 3 with a proximity key. It says, I changed the PCM to a used unit and programmed it with Mazda IDS. It says success, but the anti-theft light is blinking. What can I do to fix this? Uh, so there are a lot of stuff you need to do. This is one of the, I guess one of the biggest things that I'll say anytime when programming a module is to make sure you always read the service information. You wanna make sure that you have all of the tools necessary, all the equipment necessary, and all the steps that you're gonna to need to do are, you're prepared to do all of those. So anytime you replace a, a theft related module on a Mazda or Ford product uh, even, especially in 2013 era, they were very similar systems used. They were designed by Ford for their diagnostic system. Um, let me move this in a little closer. I would say that if you go through and read the instruction, you're gonna find you're gonna to need to do what's called a parameter reset. And with a proximity system, there's some pretty specific instructions on where you would put the keys, because you're gonna to have to have two keys to do this. 
Um, with the proximity ones, you're going to have to learn two proximity keys and the chips inside those on a Mazda 3, the key that pulls out the back, those have to be learned as well. So you're going to need two full proximity keys in order to do this parameter reset correctly. Uh, there are ways to do it without that, but it's uh, it would be something you would need to learn how the system works really, really well to start off with. And you could apply some critical thinking skills to that in order to come up with a plan on how to do it without two keys. Uh, so I'm going to tell you you're going to need two keys to do this, and you're going to need to read read through the service information. You'll find that a parameter reset is needed. Um, and a parameter reset is basically a handshake between all the modules to kind of reinitiate, kind of tell all the modules, hey, we put a new module in the theft system. You're going to need to know who this is so you can kind of talk to it and don't get a, a denial back when you request that. So, uh, or hey, unfortunately, we got you got a few more steps to do. So let's look at a parameter reset and then uh, go from there. All right, on to the next question. All right, the next email is from a Mo S. Mo says, just watched your video on how to program a blank Nissan TCM with NERS, and I want my 7 minutes and 27 seconds of my life back. That was useless. Mo, welcome to the channel. Thanks for all your support. This question is from Doug G. He says, hey, Keith, saw your video on a Mazda ABS module programming with the launch, and I wanted to know if I'd be able to do this, but my old module doesn't communicate. Is there any way that you'd be able to enter the as build? So, unfortunately, the launch only does a PMI process, a programmable module installation, where it will talk to the original module, pull the configuration as built data, and then when you install the new module, it will push that data into the module. So, unfortunately, if the old module doesn't communicate, then a PMI can't be done with the launch. Now, I have noticed that in the past, the Autel did have the ability to manually enter as-built data in some modules, very few. Uh, so I would say your best bet would be for like 49 bucks, I think, is what Mazda charges for 72 hours is their short term. Um, with a J2534 device, you can get MMP, Mazda Module Programming, which covers uh, most modules for most Mazdas like 2018, 2017 and down. Uh, so it's like 50 bucks if you have a JBox to, uh, and a uh, laptop that you've used before. Make sure you don't install the software on the same partition or uh, hard drive as Ford, Honda, Jaguar, or Land Rover. All of those are built by Bosch as well. So because some of the internal files used by the software are named the same thing, it can corrupt both of the softwares. So you'd want to use a fresh partition that meets all their recommended specifications and use either uh, MMP or I think the other one's called MDSFA. That's their newer one. That's it's all diag. It just depends upon what year it is. But if yours is a similar year, you know Mazda like a like an eight, nine, ten, somewhere around that. That's where we were working on in that video. Um, then unfortunately, no, you cannot use the launch. You'll need to use an actual the the Mazda MMP module mod, Mazda module programming software. Uh, that's about all I've got time for today. Just want to do a short little video. I've got about seven more emails I can go through, try to backlog those and get those all ready. Um, so if you guys like this, let me know. I'll try to do this once a week, and we'll see you guys next time. But don't forget, you can send your questions to techquestions at l1training.com. Again, I'll put a link at the bottom and a little thing across the bottom. And we'll see you next time, guys. Thanks for watching.